All right, y'all, welcome to the show. Um, today, we are all over the place. I'm going to tell you about a crack, heroin, and meth, I think, store that now uh, exists, and it's in Canada. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. So I'll, I'll give you all the details around that. We have uh, Oklahoma is cracking down on trans people in a way that probably goes above and beyond any other legislation that I've seen. They effectively want to want to ban it even for um, certain adults. It's kind of crazy. And then later on in the show, we have some uh, New York young Republicans decided they were going to release an ad to show like how they're really tough guys and they're and they're then ready to fight and it's one of the silliest things i've ever seen so i can't wait to share that with you uh but first let's go ahead and start with um with larry summers so larry summers is this neoliberal economist he's been huge in democratic circles for a very long time i mean he's really helped shape the uh the new Democrat philosophy, the Bill Clinton philosophy. And from Bill and onwards, this guy, this guy's had a, a lot of influence and sway over Democratic presidents and uh, Democratic politicians. And so he, uh, he decided to talk to Bloomberg about what's going on with inflation and what's going on with the economy. And he gave us a video that is so absurd, it looks like self-parody. Take a look. I've been speaking in a different way about the Fed in the last couple of months than I had been before. And that's because, for whatever reason, they have come around to views quite close to mine. They think inflation is the primary concern. They explicitly recognize that there's going to need to be increases in unemployment to contain uh, inflation. They recognize the salience of labor market developments as a kind of super core measure of inflation. They're showing awareness of the fact that the neutral interest rate is a real interest rate concept rather than a uh, nominal uh, interest rate uh, concept. They're recognizing that the trade-off is not between unemployment and inflation, but between unemployment and the level of entrenched uh, in uh, inflation. These are the kinds of points that I've been stressing on your show uh, for the past uh, 18 months. And First of all, <laughs> it, 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 super, super boring this guy is. But the main point, as you heard him say at the beginning there, is um, we just, we need higher unemployment. Like we just, we need it in order to uh, get our economy in order. A political and economic elite arguing for higher unemployment while in a tropical paradise. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't parody this if you tried. He he is self-parody. Let's see if he puts us to sleep any longer. And I think uh, I'm gratified to see that uh, they now are increasingly representing orthodoxy. I think it's interesting uh, that the Fed is indicating a commitment to tighter policies, more focus on resisting inflation than the market is expecting they will carry through on. I think I would be closer to the Fed at this point in terms of judging what will happen uh, than I would be to the market. All right. So let me let me break down what he's saying there. What he's saying is, hey, we have inflation. Inflation is a real problem. We have to get it under control. Um, and the way to get it under control is to jack up interest rates. When you jack up interest rates, in turn, you're going to uh, increase unemployment. But don't worry, increasing unemployment is a good thing because that's the way to gain price stability back. And he seems to indicate he wants the Fed to continue to raise interest rates uh, and to continue to increase unemployment. He said previously he wants unemployment to be 6% or higher in order to get price stability stability back. Okay, now, inflation, at least recently, has come down a decent amount. And we're almost at that 2% rate, which is what economists want. They want, you know, basically 2% 2 inflation year over year. So we're, we're already at that. They've already raised interest rates uh, a number of times. To call for that to continue is borderline criminal. 
because he's so casual and nonchalant about kicking millions of Americans fundamentally into poverty. Which, again, make no mistake about it, that is his goal. That is what he, he views that as a solution, not a problem. Because he cares more about the price stability um, than he does about the individuals who would be devastated under the move he's calling for. There's just something, it, it's so, again, a guy who's a political and economic elite calling for higher unemployment while on a tropical island, in, in a tropical paradise, condemning millions more people to poverty and degradation while sipping a mojito about 100 yards from a beach. What are we really talking about here? Now, by the way, he's also just wrong. Like, this, this is the problem with Larry Summers. It's not just that he's out of touch and he's an elitist goon. It's also that he's wrong. This guy was one of the architects of some of the worst economic policies in the modern era. This guy, I think he was responsible. He was one of the primary people responsible for what was called the Graham Leach Bliley Act, um, which was the repeal of Glass Steagall. For those of you who don't know, Glass Steagall was a piece of legislation which basically said you have to separate. There needs to be a wall of separation between commercial banking and investment banking. Commercial banking is like when you go to the local bank and put your money in there, you assume it's going to be safe. And if they're going to do anything with it, it's going to be relatively safe bets. But we had this marrying together of commercial banking and investment banking. So you would go put your money in the bank and they would take that and do all these crazy casino capitalist bets. And a lot of them went belly up. So this guy has been an architect of the neoliberal era, the deregulation of the marketplace, the shifting of a tremendous amount of power to Wall Street and the big financial institutions. And clearly, they don't deserve that power. They abuse that power. And we need those regulations in place because without them, uh, these guys can blow the whole economy up. And again, this guy was leading the charge on that front. And he's been proven wrong with every major policy change that he's called for and that he's been the architect of, and now here he is, just casually saying, like, yeah, kick millions more people into poverty, increase unemployment drastically. Uh, I mean, it's it's truly astonishing. Now, the final point I'll make is, look, the um, if inflation has already kind of been tamed to a large extent, then why would you continue to call for this? And inflation has, in recent days, become much more tamed. And so, and, and my fear was, look, I was afraid raising the interest rates at all, or certainly continuing to do it this much, I, I was afraid that this could lead to stagflation. Because the why do we actually have inflation? Well, many experts say it's because of uh, the supply chain, the supply chain woes, and also because of corporate greed. So like you have monopolies, anti-competitive monopolies, and then you have corporations using the hysteria around the narrative of inflation and using that to then turn around and jack up prices. And there were articles, Business Insider covered this, many covered this. They gave specific examples of corporations that raised prices, even though they didn't have to raise prices. They were just doing it because they saw an opportunity because everybody was so afraid of inflation. They said, hey, we should just jack prices up anyway. People are going to pay it. And so they did. And so you had a situation where the inflation was not, uh, was not tied to what he thinks it was tied to. And so to, to just continue to raise interest rates and, uh, you know, basically force a recession on the country, and then you might still have inflation in that scenario, because again, they could keep price gouging and the supply chain could still be messed up because of the pandemic. It's basically like a worst case scenario. So, I mean, again, he's just wrong, and especially now looking at the numbers now and then to turn around and still say we need to force... If, if your economic ideology... Uh, necessitates pushing millions of people into abject poverty as a solution, then I don't, I fundamentally don't believe in your system. A system should only exist in so far as, as it serves the people, as it like makes sense to give everybody a decent life. And when you say, no, the solution is to make everybody live in a worse way, to have less money, to not thrive, well, then you're almost admitting that you, you prioritize the well-being of the market and the system itself over the individuals within it. And that's really putting the cart before the horse in a way. You know, I mean, these ironically, these are the same kind of arguments that these sorts of people make against, like, socialist systems. It makes you feel, oh, you have this, like, utopian pie-in-the-sky idea and then everybody suffers under your system. It's like, well, how does that differ from your conception of capitalism? 
when you say the solution is to kick millions more people into poverty and to raise unemployment, I mean, that, that's an admission. Like, we don't care about the individuals within the system. We care about, they're basically like market fundamentalists in a way. So, it, he's going to keep calling for this. And this, the sad thing is, this is a guy that Biden listens to and believes in. And uh, I don't know if the Fed chair is completely of the same school of thought as, as Larry Summers, but this guy has had a horrendous effect on the body politic and on our economy. He's been wrong about basically everything. And again, it's quite an admission where he's just condemning people to unemployment and poverty and acting like this is some sort of a solution. And then make no mistake about it. He also would come out. So let's say we, we did this and we got 6%, 8% unemployment rate, whatever it is, we spark a recession. He would then turn around and say, oh, no, no you can't do stimulus tax because that'll make inflation even worse. So in order for his ideal system to function, he needs millions and millions of people, people in poverty and degradation. What does that say about you? As he's laying comfortably on a tropical paradise island. Would he be willing to be one of those people? Oh, sorry, you lost your job and you can't get a job, but it's okay. We need to do this in order to get inflation under control. It just, it's beyond grotesque. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.